Hello guys, welcome to this exciting and informative tutorial on one of the most powerful tools in the business world, Microsoft Excel. Uh, whether you're a student, a professional, or just someone who wants to get organized, Excel can help you achieve your goals. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the world of spreadsheets and explore everything from basic functions to advanced data analysis techniques so grab your mouse and keyboard and get ready to become an, an excel pro in no time uh, my name is ty if this is your first time to my channel you are welcome uh, in this tutorial we're just going to be looking at microsoft excel what you can use it for its functionalities and all basically for beginners so if you don't know anything about microsoft excel before this video is for you so I have a slide here that will be guiding us through the process and through what we're supposed to do. So please, without further ado, let's get into it. So we are going to start from the basics uh, of what Microsoft Excel is. So in the first model here, we'll be getting to know what Microsoft Excel is, how to sign into your Microsoft account, how to create, open and save your workbook and how to identify part of the workbook. So I'm just going to go straight to the power, to the Excel now and show you what it's all about. So if you open your Microsoft Excel, this is the first thing you see. This is the first interface that you see. Now, these are templates, as you can see here. It's, the template is just like normal Microsoft Word or your PowerPoint that you used before. So, because it's, a, it's just one of the suits that is contained in the Microsoft Office. So, Microsoft Excel is one of the suits that you have in Microsoft Office. So, as you can see from the screen here, these are recent work that I've opened. Then, these are templates. Now, templates are, are like already done for you thin. Uh, they are already done for you. All you need to do is just to edit it. But of course, for you to use most of these templates, you must have enough knowledge of what Microsoft Excel is first. You must know how to use it. So, but in our case here, what we'll be doing is to open a blank sheet. So, I'll be opening a blank sheet here. So, this basically, as you can see, this, this button here to open, you can create account. Now, the account thing is for somebody that has like... Uh, Maybe you have or you maybe you have an account with Microsoft Office with Microsoft Word, the Microsoft account that has premium access. Then if you put you can sign in your account here and uh, your name will be displayed here. Up here like this. Just like you have my name there. Though I didn't buy my own honestly, but uh, you can purchase your own and then you have your name signed in there. Then that's what the slide talked about. Then other options and feedback. So, but in our case, please let's just go to the business of the day by opening the blank sheet. So, if you open the blank sheet, this is what you see. This is the interface of Microsoft Excel. Now, the Excel is just like your normal Microsoft Word. That is in terms of the interface. The only difference is Microsoft Excel is used for typing and editing text. Microsoft Excel is used for calculation and all you get. So from our slide here, we can say that Excel is a spreadsheet program in the Microsoft Office system. So you can use Excel to create and format workbooks, a collection of, a collection of spreadsheets. That is a workbook is a collection of spreadsheets in order to analyze data and make more informed business decisions. So that's what, but basically the first thing I'm going to do is to walk you through the interface. So we can, have, as you can see here, we have the tabs, we have the file, well, you can save your work. I've just showed you this. Now, this document that is open is not yet saved. This document where we have open like this is not yet saved. So these are all tabs. We have the home tab, home tab, insert tab page layout, formulas, data, review, view, help, and of course, I'm using, this is Office 2019, so this is Microsoft Excel 2019, so you might be using an older version, but it doesn't still matter, 
Uh, one thing I forgot to show you is how to open your Microsoft Excel. How do you open it? If you click on your Windows tab, if you click on your Windows tab, you'll be able to. Okay, so like we have seen, this is the interface. This is the interface of our Microsoft Excel. So like I said before, we have tabs here. These are tabs. Like I said, these are tabs. Sorry for that. These are tabs. So the tabs are like... Uh, everything you can see up here is the tab. This is the tab. Now, the tab contains a ribbon. The ribbon is what you use to work with in Microsoft, in Microsoft Excel. The ribbons now contain the tools that you used to work with or that you can work with. So we have insert tab and other tabs like that that, has, that contain the ribbons. The ribbons are the tools you used to work with. Like you can see on the home tab here, we have the paste, copy, cut and not all of that. We have the clipboard. Okay, so let's go back to this. So like I said, the tab or the ribbon now is what contain the tools that you work with or that you used to work in your Microsoft tools. So these are some of the tools here in the ribbon. All these that we can see up here, they are all ribbons. These are the ribbons. Anything on top of your Microsoft Excel here yeah, is the ribbon. Now, the ribbons contains the tools that you work with or that used to work in your Microsoft Word. So this is the formula bar. The formula bar is where you type your formulas, basically, or anything you type in any cell will appear in the formula bar. So this is the spreadsheet or workbook. Now you can see below here that we have sheet one. The name of this sheet is called sheet one. Now I can add so many sheets as possible. Now I can click on new sheets, new sheets, New sheet, I will have sheet 2. New sheet, I will have sheet 3. Now, the combination of these sheets is what makes up a workbook. Now, it's also important to know that when you double-click on it or this sheet, it can be renamed. Let's say I want the name of this one to be data. You see, it has been renamed. If you double-click on it, I want this to be fresh. Fresh sheet. So, that is it so now it's important to also know that these are called these these tiny boxes they are called cells the tiny boxes are called cells now what is a cell a cell is the smallest unit of a spreadsheet a cell is the smallest unit of a spreadsheet so now we have a whole lot of spreadsheets a whole lot of cells here now the whole lot of cells is what makes up a sheet is what makes up a spreadsheet now, combination of one or more sheets is what makes up a workbook. So let's go back to our guideline. Then, of course, I'm going to be showing you. Let's go back to slide two. Uh, we've seen this slide. So let me just display this. Okay, so this is what I just displayed now. This is what I just showed you. Now, this slide was prepared using Windows 8. So, but of course, I'm using Windows 10 for this tutorial. So, please, but if you are still, if you are using Windows 8 or Windows 11, this will still work as to how to open it. And you, of course, you have the same interface if you are using this version. So, we've just showed you how to click type of workbook to create. And know if you want to use the template or not. And then, of course, you confirm, click to create to confirm the process. That's to create your workbook. Of course, the interface, which is the ribbon thing I just showed you now. So with Windows 8 or Microsoft Office, I just showed you. I've showed you how to sign in. Uh, the sign in is, of course, you must have, you must have a licensed Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office uh, key or an account to Microsoft Word to be able to sign in into this. Of course. When someone else is signed in, yeah, let me show you. If somebody else is signed in here, yeah, I can log the person out and also change the account. That's what they are saying there. So I can, you can change somebody's account clicking on that, uh, this thing. Of course, I can sign the person out 
and sign in my own account. That's what this slide is saying. So after you must have signed in, pa 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 pa. Now it's also important that each of these cells have a name. Now each of these cells have a name. Now basic thing that you must know in Microsoft Word is that this these cells have a name. Each cell here yeah, have a name. Now these cells or the spreadsheet is subdivided into rows and columns. Now rows and columns. Rows and columns. Rows and columns. So the numbers represent the rows numbers here represent the rows while the alphabet represent the column rows and column so it means the first cell we have here is cell one row one <laughs> do you understand this is cell one column one cell one row one now remember the numbers represent the row while the alphabet represent the column so each of these number here any 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 of the cell i click on you discover that the name is being displayed for me here this is cell e8 e5 sorry e5 why this will be e7 why this will be e8 so you can see any cell i click on here the name will be displayed any cell i click on the name will usually be displayed here so for example now just click on e6 and you can see there so any any cell you click on it will be displayed so of course the formula bar which is what i've shown you this is the formula bar here where you can type and have access to all your formulas So these are the working areas. This whole place now is the working area according to this slide here. The working area is where the data is displayed. So everywhere here you see everything here. These are the working area. The working area are where the cells are, like I said. So moving on. now we are still looking at the basics which is part of the workbook now the worksheet tabs along the bottom of the working area switch between worksheets now like i showed you before in here you can create different worksheets a combination of worksheets is what makes up a workbook now the green status bar at the bottom of the window displayed information about the current workbook so now you can see now my own year is not green uh, but it's it's here that i showing you ready now this thing you display information about this particular worksheet here so the next thing we are going to do now is learn to save our document now save, save our worksheet so how do you save the same way you save in your microsoft word the same way you save in your powerpoint is the same way you save in microsoft excel how do you save you go to your file you can use save as or save since we are saving for the first time you can use save then for other savings then you can use save as then you can use save as let's use save as here yeah? now the difference between this save as and save is this when you are saving for the first time you can use any of them you can use save or save as but after you must have worked on your document you don't need to use save as again because save as means you want to change the directory of where the document is being saved so for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to use save as then choose the directory where i want my document to be saved of course let's say i want it to be saved on the desktop then i'm going to name it excel one of course you can save your documents with any name that you want so that is that about that so let's go into the tools some of these tools which we called we call them ribbon so let's go into these tools and see what, how you can use them 
So the first thing now, you can see that these cells are where you can type. The cells are where you can type anything you type here will be displayed. So let's say data collection. Now, you can see now, I just type data collection and is beyond the cell. Now, of course, you can, you can, let me just control Z. You can enlarge these cells here. Uh, let me just make this bigger. I'm going to zoom it. You can see I'm zooming it. I'm zooming it to just so that it to be bold. I don't know if you can see it. You can see this zoom thing here at the bottom. So that's what I used to zoom this because I want it to be clear. So now I just type data collision. If you look at this cell now, the cell is not wide enough. The cell is not wide enough. So what do I do? There are two ways to do it. You can either click here and drag to suit whatever thing you've typed or you double click it if you double click it it automatically fit in into the cell so that's that for that so we'll be looking at these styles one after the other i'm looking at the functions which you can perform with them so the first thing you have here is your paste the paste option which is ctrl v now the same way you paste in your microsoft word is the same way you paste in your microsoft excel so what I'm going to do now to use that function, you can do, let's say I like this text now that I've, that I've typed, then I can copy it using this tool here. Copy or use your control C. Now, maybe I want to paste it in this, uh, in this other cell. Of course, I can now use this paste here. Now you can see that the data has been pasted here. So that's the first thing now, cut. The cut to the same way you cut your text is the same way you cut here. Let's say this text, I want to highlight it, I light it like this and cut. Now, the difference between cut and copy is that cut, you, the text will still be there, but copy, the text will no longer be there. Now, when you cut or copy a text, where is it saved to? It's usually saved in the clipboard. Now, you can see now, this is a clipboard tool. Now, these tools are grouped. These, these tools are grouped in the ribbon. This clipboard, you can actually click to see more options and see what the clip what is in clipboard. Now, there's nothing pasted, but something has been copied. You see, the last thing that we copied is data collision, and which is what we have there. So, here too, where you have, you can change the font, the font of your document, the font size, and the font type. So the font type of this document can be changed by highlighting it and of course clicking on the font whatever on the font uh, on the change font option there i will click this i don't like this font so i'm going to ctrl z to go back no ctrl z is for undo while ctrl y is to redo same thing you have your so let's say data collision for let's make let's let's give this let's make this meaningful data collision for t design stores so now we have typed this thing now you discover that we need this to cover these three three rows these three rows we need to cover these three so how do you do it you merge and center the text why we need to merge these three cells merging cells like converting one or more cell two or more cells into one so what we want to do now is to just merge the cell so i'm going to merge and center the text to make it one that's one thing that we've done here now so of course now from here we can now change the font type to maybe uh Futura. Or any other font that you might want to use so now we've done just that so now we can make this bold you can apply your bold but of course we can i don't think we, are, we can apply bold to this text you can do bold you can do italic you see you can underline the text if you want i don't want to underline it so that is just that about that we can increase the font size 
let's say let's say we want it to be 18 you see it's too big so i'm going to reduce it control z back to we can also use this text here this tool we are saying here to increase the font size and also reduce it so that is just basic sha. so we can still change the color of this text here the color let's say i want to change the color of this i want this color to be red for example you see i can change it to be red i can change the fill color to be yellow in this case you see it's looking somehow but i want to change the fill color here to green and change the text color to yellow So I think I like it this way. Of course, you can choose your own color, whichever way you want it. Whichever color you want, you can always change it. So going back to our slide now, uh, we discovered that we've, we've learned how to save our workbook and choose a location. You see, you can choose specific location or click browse. Of course, we've done all that. Now, saving a workbook in the saving in the save as dialog in the save as dialog navigate to where you want to save the file enter name and click save which is what we've done choose the specific file location you see this in uh, in their case here it's also save on desktop as you can see browse to the file select it this to open the file back that is to open a saved file that's what they just described there so we have some review questions here, uh, which is uh, how do you open Microsoft Excel 2013 with Windows 8? So please, you can answer some of these questions in the comment section. How do you change the account used by Microsoft Excel? What is the keyboard shortcut to save a workbook? Of course, we know that the keyboard shortcut is Ctrl S. How do you change it? You can always switch account to maybe yeah if someone signed into your microsoft you can always use your own microsoft office account to switch uh to switch and sign in then how do you open microsoft office excel with windows 8 all you need to do is to click on the windows button i'm using windows 10 in this case you search for excel then you click open of course then your microsoft excel will be open but please let me know what you think in the comment section now, what is the command sequence to view all of the available templates? Uh, please, I want to get answers to that too. Now, what locations are listed when opening a file? Of course, when you open the when you open your Microsoft, the, the, the files you see or the listed locations are like recent uh, worked on document. The document you recently worked on. So, moving to module 2 now, your first workbook. I know here yeah, we have done something already. Uh, but please, I want us to just stay glued to this, uh, our guide here. So in this module, you will learn how to enter, select, and delete data. How to use the cut, copy, and paste, which is some of the things I've done there. How to use undo and redo. So the undo and redo is Ctrl Z. You use Ctrl Z to undo and use Ctrl Y to redo. Now how to use the cut, copy, and paste which is one of the examples we have done here we typed a text here called data uh let's say this is our we type the text let's say this is number now yeah let's say that let's call that number i'm going to reduce this because it's too big then i'm going to call the next cell a name uh product name let's say product name product name then price what's the price of this uh, product then how many product do we have so of course i've shown you how to highlight copy or make bold and no, all we've done all that those are basic and of course i'm doing this tutorial for basic so if you don't know anything about microsoft excel this tutorial is for you and if there's anything you miss you can always replay this video so 
now how do you enter select and delete data of course you can delete data by using the backspace i'm going to if you click on any cell maybe you want to delete this text now you can highlight it and just backspace or you delete on your keyboard to delete i'm going to control z to bring it back or you click on the cell and come to this uh, formula bar and write maybe highlight it and delete or you just click on the formula bar and be deleted you see it will be deleted then you can control z to bring it back also that is that then of course moving on now selecting a cell you click on the cell to select a row click on the row header now like i've shown you numbers stand for row while alphabet stands for column so let's say you want to highlight all the text on this column now all you need to do is to click on the alphabet if you click on a number if you click on the alphabet here it's going to select or highlight all the rows now this column two here if i want to select all the data in this row all i need to do is just to click on the number and everything here will be highlighted now the point where the columns and row meet is usually the name of that particular cell now like the name of this cell now is cell b2 b2 that is the it the meeting point of uh of your rows of the rows and columns is what is referred to as the name of that particular cell what is the cell like i said the cell is the smallest unit of a spreadsheet smallest unit of a spreadsheet is called a cell so we can see now that this thing here the name is b2 and it's been shown there so we are just building up data here gradually so moving on on our slide we are still on selecting data so to select a column click the column header so the column header now is the alphabet like i've shown here the column header here is the alphabet to select all the columns or the rows to the same thing you click on the number so now select a cell and enter data by typing uh, we have done that before we've clicked on the cell and actually enter data uh, so the same way just click on any cell and enter a data you see it's as easy as that so entering data we are still on entering and deleting data so you can also enter data by selecting the cell and typing in the formula bar yes that is very very possible i'm going to delete this now like i said if you if you select a cell now and come to this formula bar to type anything it will reflect here now we are typing here but everything we are typing is reflected here so we can see it here so and of course any cell that you have any type text if you click on it you you will also see it in the formula bar so the formula bar displays data from each cell any cell that is clicked on you see we have nothing here and that's why nothing is being displayed here moving on remove data by selecting the cell and pressing delete so you can decide let's say i want to delete this data now all you need to do is to click delete on my keyboard you see i just deleted it i can do ctrl z to bring it back but i can also come here highlight it and delete or i click you see where my cursor is blinking and backspace or you just come to that particular cell and click delete on your keyboard and the data will be deleted so entering and deleting data we are still on entry so to delete large amount of data click the delete drop down command in the home tab so if you want to delete large amount of data you click the delete drop down command in the home tab so let's practicalize that uh, you can see the delete uh, command that we talked about here so let's say we click here like this we can use this delete it will give us other options is it delete cell what do you want to delete cell delete sheet rows delete sheet columns now why is showing sheet sheet rows here is because it's only the rows that is being selected you know i selected the row here so if i select column here now 
this column is going to change back to maybe you can see delete sheet columns is active or delete sheets you can delete the entire sheet this entire sheet here this entire sh one can be deleted from here but in our case now let's just delete this row delete sheet row you see everything has disappeared so i'm going to control z to bring it back because i don't want to delete that we're just using that for practical for practical uh of course don't forget this is how i'm adjusting this to bring it forward using this zoom button here so we can change the interface you can change to page layer we can change to page layout break page preview i know but for beginners it's good you start like this with this view <clears throat> going back to our slide click delete sheet column for this example so like we have done that before we highlighted it and click on delete sheet column and it, everything wiped out so moving on the entire column is removed exactly we saw that before now that when you click on that option the entire column will be removed now using undo and redo now apart from using your ctrl z or which are this short key ctrl z we have these arrows up here the arrows up here is what we can use to this arrow up here we can use to either go back and font either to redo or undo what we have done before so that is just that for that so click the undo command in the quick access toolbar or you control z that is that so using shortcut using cut copy and paste so you can see the short keys here i've talked about this severally you can use ctrl x to cut ctrl c to copy ctrl v to paste now commands also on the home tab and they're also all these commands are also on the home tab this home tab here we can see it these are there are other commands here that we've not touched so now uh it's just a practicalizing we're just practicalizing how to use cut and paste which i have done before so how do you do that we can cut we can cut this text here we can control x you see now if you control x it's going to be showing something like this so if you paste it here it won't paste but if it's a microsoft word it's going to paste why why do you think it's not copying we are going to see that in the slide. I'm going to press escape button so that that thing will stop. So moving on. You see? What they did here is copy. You see? Copy. You come to the next cell where you want to paste it. You see you can paste i just copied and pasted now as you can see so that is just that for that you can also cut and paste too so that is the end of module two so the review questions is what's the fundamental difference between cutting and copying data two how do you select multiple cells in a workbook Three, where can you find the command to delete an entire row? Four, what is the keyboard shortcut for the undo command? Undo command. Five, what is the redo command? What does the redo command do? So what's the function of this redo command? So please leave your comments, leave your answers in the comment section of this uh, channel. Now we move to the module 3 of this uh, lesson which has to do with working with data uh, working with data so in this module you will learn how to insert rows and columns merge split and move cells use paste pe space special use find and replace then hide and hide cell so let's just go straight to it uh, the first thing there is uh, inserting rows and columns 
Uh, so I'm going to go back to this our work here. As you can see. So I'm sure by now you're already familiar with this interface. So this is a cell like you all know. So how do you insert rows and uh, columns? Like we have here. You can insert a new column by clicking the column header and choosing insert. So for example now, maybe I want to work with this column here. I can highlight by clicking on the on the alphabet C here. You see the rows here has been highlighted. Let me just zoom this so that I'm sure it's clear now. <clears throat> so we can when you highlight this, just like it is being demonstrated here in the slide. You see, so how do you insert? If I want a new column now, maybe I have something here. Uh, numbers number one number what product what's the name of the product let's say a spoon now what's the price tag for this product the price tag let's say the price tag is 300 or 200 so now maybe there's a mistake here or probably there's a need to insert another column there's supposed to be another column header here before the product name so what do you do in such case that's a late case where you need to insert a new role so we need a new row here or a new column so for you to insert a new column you just need to highlight then you right click you right click on the on the alphabet there and you click insert you see a new column here has been inserted so maybe before we have this now maybe we want to get product details as another heading there product details you see we now have something like that there now so i can just double click here and it will fit into that uh, column into the cell to fit into the cell there so that's how you insert a new header how, that's how to insert a new row now how do you insert we just inserted a new row now so let's we just inserted a new column sorry so let's insert a new row so you can do the same thing maybe before this i want a different number or let's assume that this is number two of course we are supposed to have one before two so let's insert what how do you insert we are going to insert a new row here yeah, that will enable us to put number one so you just uh, you click here you click on the number there it's going to highlight the whole row you right click and click on insert you see a new row will be inserted for you to put your number one what is the name of the product maybe printer yeah product detail now the product i think this should be the product name uh product name so i'm going to i'm going to move it I'm going to move this there like that so product details maybe two printers two printers then the product name is printer then what's the price tag let's say four thousand in or whatever then for the spoon we can say the product detail is like maybe cutleries cutleries uh-huh so that's how to insert we just learned how to insert rows and columns to our spreadsheets so moving on now that's the same thing this slide just demonstrated here you inserted the data now as we go on we're going to move to using the data used in this uh, in this slide so but before then let's continue using our own data that we have here so inserting a new row i've shown you that a new column appears left of the selected column and then of course inserting rows and columns to insert a new row you use the row header so the row header in this case now is the half is the numbers why the column header represents is the color that i represented by by alphabet why the row header represented by numbers as we can see 
So in certain, still on certain new, in certain the new. So when you, of course, this is what we have done. Is a new row will appear above, above the selected. Uh, so moving on now. So the next thing we are going to do now is merging and splitting cells. Uh, I thought I've, I've shown you guys that, but with what this slide is showing us, we we'll just do it again. Merging and splitting cells. How do you merge and split cells? For example, let's say this is not. Uh, I want another cell above this cell here. Above this cell. All I need to do is to right click and insert. You can see a new cell has been inserted for me. Now, this text was being typed using one cell. How, that, how was that done? Because the cells, about four cells here, may, were meshed to make up this one whole cell where we have the data collection for T design stops. Do you understand? So moving on the same way how do you how do you move split and merge cells of course you just i like the cells that you want to merge i like the cells like this then you come to merge in your home tab here in your home tab you see merge and center there's a lot of options there when you when you click the small arrow down there it will show you a lot of options like maybe you want to you want to merge and center you want to merge across you want to merge cells you want to unmerge cells so it means when two or more cells are being combined you can always unmerge them you can always unmerge them back that's what it means so merge and center will merge the cells together and put the text in the middle and centralize the text that's just it they merge across we just merge the cells across borders then merge cells will it merge the highlighted cell, highlighted cells then on merge cells of course is to unmerge the cells that has been merged so moving forward we are going to merge these four cells and make them one so we are going to merge and center so as you can see now these cells has become one the four cells are get one so we can name it maybe we can call this header for example now you can go further by giving this by increasing the size purpose of all maybe increasing the font size then uh, probably we can change the text color to gold we can bolden it we can make it italic if we want but i don't want it italic let's just leave it like this what else should we do to this text? Mm. This clear format here is to clear format it. Like maybe, for example, this now. We can always clear formatting. Clear formatting, clear all. We just make everything go back to the way it was. So, but we don't want to clear formatting. So, that's that for that. So, moving on now. You select the cells how do you make cells exactly you select the cells you want to merge click home you see you go to merge and center you see a drop down you see merge cells though so this is just giving us the steps to what we have done so merging and splitting cells the selected cells above become one large cell just like we have seen here that the selected cells and the, the cells were merged about four cells there have become one one large cell so moving on so of course to unmerge cells you still go to your home tab you see merge and center drop down then your merge cells for example if you want to unmerge these cells now now this is this one big cell if you want to unmerge it we can do go to the same home tab you go to your merge and center in the home tab you see your merge cells that's the last option down there then you can unmerge the cells and all the cells that has been merged will come back now we can always double click here to fit the text into our cells so that's just that moving on moving cells 
Now, this is very, very important for you, especially as a beginner to Microsoft Excel, uh, is to know that cells can be moved. Now, how do you move these cells? You move your cursor to the bottom border of the cell until cursor changes into the move icon. Now, I'm going to show you guys shortly. Now, these cells we have here, this, each of these cells can be moved. What would you mean by that? Each of these cells can be moved. You see, when you over your mouse on it, you see the cells will change, the cursor will change to something like an arrow. Can you see that? Now, when it changes to this arrow, something like an arrow, I don't know if you can notice that. If you, if you click it and move it, you see, it's going to move the text and whatever properties is in that, whatever thing is in that cell to a different location. So that's what this uh, slide is talking about. Still on working with data. So drag, still on moving cells, you drag and drop the selected cell to a new location, which is what we have done here. Of course, you can always move it back. We can always move it back. You over your mouse, it can be bottom or anywhere around the cells, around the cell. Then you move it. Now, this cell was in, it was here before. It was in cell C4. Now, we moved it to cell D9. Now, we can always change the location. Let's say we want to move it to H2. You see, this is cell H2 here that we have moved it to. You can always confirm the name of whatever cell you have there. The name of the box here. So, let's move it back. But that's what you can see in the slide here. A number was here before. Now, it was moved down a bit. So, if you move a cell that already contains data, you'll be asked if you want the data you are moving to replace the existing cell. You can click OK to complete the action. However, keep in mind that the data in the target cell will be lost. What is this saying? If we already have one data here, and you have another thing here, for example, let's say cup. Now, you want if you want to move this data, or if you move the data in this particular cell, in this particular cell C4 to this place. Now, you are going to be asked that there's already data here. Do you want to replace it? Now, if you click OK, the moved data will be replaced by the already by the existing data. It means the printer or whatever data you have in C7 will be lost, which is what we just saw here. So I'm going to control Z to bring it back. The same thing applies to this. If you move the data from cell C7 to cell C4, you see, it's giving a prompt here that there's already data here. Do you want to replace it? So you can click OK and the data will be replaced. These are just basics to how Excel works. So still on working with data now. So these are the questions paste special now moving to paste special initially i showed you how to copy and paste test but in microsoft excel you cannot just copy and paste cell you have something called paste special now using paste special one paste special allows you to perform operations that may be tedious to do another way it pastes data and allows you to perform operations in the destination cells using the pasted data we are going to practicalize that now, enter a value in the cell, right click and click copy. So let's just do that. We enter a data in the cell. We already have a cell here. We right click on this cell here called printer and click copy. Now, you see something like this, like a twine rope going around the cell. Now, that's what this data, this, this slide is saying. On to the next slide select all of the cells containing data to use now right click the selected the selection and click paste special now let's let's highlight all this place here and right click right click now the paste options here as you can see the paste option here is different you see paste you see paste view you see paste formula f but the one we want to use is paste special which is this paste special 
I'll right click again. Paste pressure. You see paste pressure. Paste. You can see now that the printer thing, the printer that we just copied now, has occupied all the space that we have here. It has occupied all the space that we have here. So I'll control Z that. Now, how do you make this twine this thing to go? It's just to press escape button on your keyboard. So I'm going to bring this back. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to auto fill this with numbers. Flash fill. No, no, no. That's not the option. Fill series. Exactly. So there's something called auto fill. That's what I just did here. Yeah? I just to is a way of uh, auto filling cells with numbers or anything. You know, these cells, Microsoft Excel is very powerful and uh, you can use it for so many things. For example, this autofill option is just a function, one of the functions of the Excel, this thing. I just autofill this number like you can see, as you just as I just did here. Another thing is, let's say I have Monday. Now, Monday here, yeah, I can autofill here and it will give me to maybe Sunday. See, we just have that now. So the auto fill option, how do you locate the auto fill option? It's just any cell that is being clicked on. You see, you see a a dot below the left or below the right hand uh, below the right corner, the right can the right hand corner of the box of the cell. If you if you over your mouse around it, you see your your cursor will change to this plus here. Yeah? Then you click and drag down. You see, it can auto fill as many boxes as possible. If we drag to the left, it's going to auto fill it too. So just as simple as that. So, but back to what we are doing, what we have learned to do is to use the paste special. So let's not forget that. I just right click or you do Control C to copy. Now, if I highlight all these cells, I just number one to eight, and click on paste special. All the the data I copied. It's going to be pasted on all the cells there so i'll just use this first option here you can see now printer 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 has been auto filled or pasted in all the highlighted cells so that's what this uh, paste special can do for you so now using paste special for now you can set options and click ok that's the, now the selected value will reflect the changes now i think uh, that's just if you copy anything and uh, copy and paste here the effect the the selected value will reflect the changes that has been copied that's what that slide is saying so now using find and replace now the find and replace option is also in your microsoft word also in our powerpoint and also in excel too now how do you copy how do you how do you find and replace now the short key to find and replace is ctrl h on your keyboard find and replace you can see if you press ctrl h on your keyboard you see this dialog box will pop up you see this dialog box here will pop up if you do your ctrl h now you can also go to your home tab here and do this last ending here you see something find and select there's in the in the ribbon there you see find and select so if you click here if you click on the small icon there you see replace you see if i click on find find will only find something for me maybe i want to look for all the printer text printer so i'm going to search for printer i'm looking for printer now i'm going to type printer find now it's going to be showing me everywhere you have printer on this my spreadsheet you can see so that is just to find text so now what we'll find and replace is we are looking for a particular text and we're replacing it with another so let's say everywhere you have a printer now i want to replace it with uh, what should we replace it with computer so what this will do now it will find replace find replace you can, I can do it one by one find replace 
that is i'm determining which of the text i want to change to computer now i can equally decide to replace all as you can see i can decide to replace all by just clicking replace all you see everything here has been replaced you can see a prompt will be telling you it will pop up telling you that all done we made six replacements in this our case here now it might be or can be more than six depending on what you are doing so now this this can also be changed back this can be reversed by either you control z or you do your control h again and go on to let's say let's look for computers now we look for computers we'll find computers and replace with with mouse now find 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 computer now replace you see it has been replaced here computer replace so that is like that so that's what this slide is uh, talking about using the find. so that's how you find and replace and of course you can see here the short key is control h on your keyboard so that's just that you can see here that's what this slide is saying so if you click replace excel will search for each instance of the next of the text in the find what in the find what field and ask you if you want to replace it with the text in the replace field so replace or we replace all in instances of the item in the find what in the find what field without asking you first so if you replace or it's going to replace everything without asking you so but of course you can find next and replace by yourself so this is what the prompting we got when we did that so working with uh we are still on working with data the model 3 of this lesson hiding and or hiding cells now right click and choose hide now this is just basic uh, these are still basic you can hide and hide cell i'm going to show you how to do that the same way we inserted i'm going to close this the same way we inserted new cells by clicking on the column or rows which is the header here the header of this column is b so if i right click you can insert now but in this our case now we don't want to insert we want to hide the cell now if you hide you see now you don't have any header called b anymore we now have a to c instead of b now the b has been hidden now how do you bring it back because that's the next question after you hide how do you bring it back you can always unhide cells by still going there to right click and unhide cell You see, you can actually do it like this. You see, we just unhide the cell now, but initially it was hidden. You see, it's hidden. Now, now the trick, the, the trick here is this: you can you just come here and increase the width, and the text or the cell will be seen. But in this case now, what this slide is saying, if you go to this right click, you can also right click and you see on hide. The same way you hide, this is the same way you can hide. On hide cell. So, even though a rule or column is hidden from view in Excel 2013, the data in the hidden cells can still be used as reference. It means the data can be used, but you are not just seeing it. That is, but you must know, of course, what the data is before you can can use it the same way we have done here they just hide this the column uh, the column and it data will be hidden from view you can see in the data presented here a c so b is hidden so we're still hiding and hiding so to unhide a roll or column right click on the tiny column header for a head for a hiding for a for a hidden row and click on hide which is what so how do we, you just click on that tiny thing you can see there click on that tiny thing click on it you see on hide now when you click on or hide if you're having trouble selecting the hidden column as it is quite small press ctrl g to bring up the go to dialog box and enter the first cell of the column 
or rolled. In this example, you will see B1. Once a hidden or row is selected, click on Format, Hide and Unhide, then Unhide Columns or Unhide. So we can click, press Ctrl G here. Yeah? You see, we can actually reference the whatever. But in our case here, yeah, like I showed you, you can just expand it here yeah, and everything will be fine. So that's how to unhide that's how to hide and unhide cells so moving on now so the review questions for this chapter is what happens when you move a cell to a location that's already contained that has already contained data now what are the four merge options available to you when you merge or merge cells now what is the keyboard shortcut to open the find and replace dialog now the answers are here on the screen for you but please let me know what you think now the answer is you'll be asked if you want the dialog the answer to the first question is you'll be asked if the data if you want the data being moved to override the data in the target cells in the target cell now what's the merge and center merge across what's the short key to do that is just control h so that is that for that moving to the last slide still not working with data so please let me know your response to these questions so what does the space special allow you to do now what happened when a paste when a worksheet is printed with hidden rows please let me know what you do now the answer to that is any hidden role or column will not be shown during why you print because for example now let's go to this place let's say we hide this cell now if you hide this and you control p control p is to print you can see the print preview the hidden cells here are not shown so that's the answer to that you can you will not see any hidden cell unless you now bring it back that is you want to hide it and then when you control pre you see you'll be able to see it now you can see what i'm saying here the, the this thing is blank it has no you are just follow this lesson and you get to understand more so moving on now so the fourth module now in this module we are going to learn how to reference cells and formulas and work with formulas how to use basic formulas how to use basic advanced options functions how to run spell check how to use the sort and filter tools to organize data so that's the next thing we're going to be looking at now so understanding cell references and formulas exact formulas are best understood as mathematical expressions that use data that use data contained within the cells of a worksheet and cells can contain numeric data cells that contain numeric data may be used in a formula to calculate other set of data we're going to be looking at all this using basic uh, functions so let's just go back to our this thing here so for the purpose of this i'm going to just uh, use i'm going to delete this i'm going to highlight it and delete so i'm going to call this value one and this of course value two then let's say total here yeah. now this is just a rough expression this is now how your work of course should be this is just a basic uh, so that's why i say i'm doing everything on one worksheet so let's say we have value here 50 okay 40 and we have here 20. now how do you do basic uh, calculations with this with this data that you have here how do you add it okay let's call this uh, addition subtraction average now this microsoft excel makes it so easy for you to do all of these uh, calculations either addition subtraction average 
and other functions that you can do now so uh, the first thing you must know is this in writing your formula in excel you must always start it with equals to now this is a rule that must not be disobeyed is a rule that must be followed at all times so let's say you have equals to now remember i want to add these two values together there are two ways to do it i'm going to show you the function to add two or more this thing together two or more cells together is called sum in excel but since we have since we have uh this okay let's just do some you see we are going to select the cells now representing that now remember that each of these cells have a name we can just highlight it or you go and type cell a9 to that's what this column represents the the two columns there represent you are adding you are summing up some a9 to some b9 you close the bracket and it enter now it's going to give you the total now how do you know if you click on this uh, number here it's going to give you the total meanwhile in your formula by here you'll be seeing the formulas the formula used to arrive at this the same way equals to subtract now how do you subtract now that is just one way uh let me show you another way to do this addition that we just done here equals to bracket we can select this cell a9 plus cell b9 if we close the bracket it's going to give us the same answer so now using that we can use equals to bracket cell a9 minus cell b b9 we'll close the bracket you see so that is just normal but the reason why using the sum this thing is better is because what if you have more than two cells to add together what if you have more than two cells to sum up so that's why it's good to always use equals to sum bracket you are like the, the cell you hit enter it's going to give you so at the same thing we'll go here equals to average you see what's the average of these two so these are basic math of course basic mathematics so going back to our slide now you can see now that this is what they use they use the a cell is referenced so you have to reference the two cells here to get the answer that's what they are saying here so to determine the cells reference select the cell in question and examine the name box which is the name i've shown you here now the name of these cells is what we use to arrive at this various answer we have here mm, let's change this we can change this uh, view or let's just give this a uh, color Yeah, just to different just to distinguish it so now it is these cells referencing these two cells here the value one value t is what we use to achieve or arrive at this answers that we have here so that is just that you can see what they did here they use the sum formula so cell references can then be used in formulas so you can see now they added value 1 to value 2 which is in cell a2 and b2 so formulas can combine values from different rows and columns so let's say we have a whole lot of number just like you can see here all formulas in microsoft excel are preceded by the equal sign so it is very very important that in any formula at all that you use in microsoft uh, excel must begin with equal sign even if it's multiplication or whatever thing must begin with equal sign. I can see here they did a multiplication. So using the auto fill. Okay, now the auto fill thing now is very very important in this case because let's say we have other values here. Let's say twelve. 
12 4 3 I'm just populating data here 5 400 3,444 5,454 like that now since we have used this uh, because that's what this slide is saying basic formula how you can auto fill now using your auto fill you can apply this formula to the remaining cells under the sales column now but in our case now we are going to apply it to each of these columns that we have here the addition subtraction and average so now looking for this uh, since we have the uh, type the formula here we are going to use you can use this auto fill to get the answer for the remaining box for the remaining cells by just dragging down and it will give us the total sum of these two numbers now if you click on it here you see that it has used the same formula that we used to get this same one here to achieve the answers for all this and this is very correct so we can also do the same here by scrolling down you see it has given us the subtraction you can see the formulas for each is being displayed here as easy as that so you let's look for the average of all these values the two values we have here you can also use the auto fill to bring it down and you have it so we can maybe design this we can we can uh, maybe increase this possibly and uh, maybe give it a shade so now you can see now so that's what the how powerful the microsoft uh, auto fill tool is so moving on now uh using basic function now almost all functions are pre-made operations that use input cells to produce output some function calculate this total sum of cells now while vast majority of functions accept input some do not for example the pile function equals pi do not accept any input it always retain the value of pi and uh, pi of course the value of pi must be given so select a cell type you see that's just the total let's what is uh, what this is showing us is this let's say we want to get the total sum of all these cells here we can always come here and do total total now how do you get the total of this the summation of all this value one you can come here and do equals to sum now i highlight you go back to this place and i write all the cells that you want to you close the brackets you hit enter on your keyboard you see it has given all this total sum this is the total sum of all these numbers here and the formula you see is being displayed here in the formula bar so this video is i think this video is getting too long and i don't want it to get too long so period there will be a part two to this so in the part two we'll be covering the other things we have to do here using auto sum all these are found in the formula tab basic functions how to use now there are some advanced options too like the if function so all these i think we're going to you can also use spell check how to use filter and no so but the real question on this is this just let me know i think this will just be part one of this uh, lecture on what tab can the spelling command be found what happens when the filter feature has been enabled now of course how to use auto fill and this module 5 so the this particular tutorial is getting too long so we can split this so please watch out for the part 2 of this lesson thank you